Paper number 6 Kinetics and Design of Semi Compliant Grid Mechanisms by Jonas Schikure, Eike Schling, Anna Bauer, and Thomas Oberwichler. Welcome to our paper presentation on Kinetics and Design of Semi Compliant Grid Mechanisms. Compliant mechanisms are part of our everyday life, especially when it comes to small objects. Their advantage is that instead of complex constructional components like hinges, transformation is achieved through elastic deformation only. The basic principle to control the deformation is to systematically apply elastic flexibility only where needed, and the quality of such a mechanism also results from the resistance to undesired deflections. By the way, when we say semi-compliant, we are talking of mechanisms that both include conventional hinges and elastic deformation. It is kind of a mixture between rigid body and purely compliant mechanisms. At architectural scale, such mechanisms are challenging. One has to deal with self-weight, heavy loads and the contrary requirements of flexibility and load bearing. One development is the field of elastic grid shells. While flexible grid members allow deformation, load-bearing capacities are gained by the spatial shape. One of the famous examples is the Multihalle Mannheim, where regular grid is pushed into the desired shape by temporary stands and then locked by fixing supports, the grid intersection angles and adding a few bracings. Current research investigates the transformation process of grids and methods to control shapes that emerge from the layout and stiffness parameters. The grid and mechanisms we investigate are based on geodesic and asymptotic curvature networks. This allows the use of initially straight beams and profiles with at least one non-deformable or strong axis. Some work on the type of mechanisms we investigate has been done in the field of differential geometry. Due to the low degree of freedom, the transformation of such grids is suitable for geometric description. Our approach is to use numerical methods to describe the transformation of semi-compliant grid mechanisms. We develop methods and workflows to use either conventional finite element methods or isogeometric analysis. The challenge is to simulate semi-compliant mechanisms from an initially deformed geometry input. The basic principle is then to measure the curvature of the initial geometry and transfer these to initial bending deformations and stresses. Additionally, loads or displacements can be applied to actuate the mechanism and analyze buckling effects or load bearing behavior in general. Engineering compliant mechanisms includes the analysis of the system's internal energy at any state. The internal energy term includes the sum of curvature squared and the stiffness parameters such as moment of inertia and elastic modulus. It crystallizes highly beneficial to separate the geometric parameters to describe a compliant mechanism. This is valid and useful whenever the mechanical parameters or the stiffness of the compliant mechanism has no impact on the shape of deformation. We find the separation also for the elastica curves that minimize the sum of curvature squared. We want to display the sum of curvature square along the process of transformation. In the graphs shown, the parameter t describes the state of mechanism. You may relate it to an instant of time. To simplify this, we display the curvature square on a domain from 0 to 1. Hereby we identify the mechanism's characteristics and receive a basis for further engineering. We further separate the beam's local curvature axis, such as torsion and bending. We retrieve the internal energy of a compliant system by easily multiplication of the curvature square sum with the stiffness parameters of the profile. The graphs give then insight on the possibilities to control the minimum energy state or how an actuation system has to perform. Let's have a closer look on what we have investigated. The table shows an overview on basic semi-compliant grid systems. We classify grid structures on W ruled geodesic and asymptotic networks. We apply appropriate profiles that meet the necessary flexibility. We further classify rotational and open base surfaces, as these show distinct characteristics. All semi-compliant systems have uniaxial hinges 
at the beam's intersections. Rotation axis is always the normal to the base surface or the local Z axis respectively. Let's start with the double ruled networks. These systems are highly limited in their deformability. We can apply geometric rules to describe the transformation by a single parameter. If we assume the profiles to stay aligned to the base surface, the transformation can be performed by torsional deformation only and no bending. Analyzing the curvature square graph shows the kinetic behavior. The states of minimum curvature square are marked blue. The more the structure folds, the more torsion is activated. Let's look at geodesic networks. To create mechanisms with geodesics, the network's layout is quite limiting. We use an open, doubly symmetric surface and apply a quadrilateral geodesic network. On the rotational surface, the network is generated by copying a geodesic around the rotational axis. The transformations are performed until natural limits occur. These are, for example, if the first grids rhombi are fully closed. The curvature square graphs show similar characteristics as those on double root networks. Both torsion and bending work to bring the structure in the same position. The minimum internal energy state cannot be controlled by the profile's stiffness relations. The blue graph marks the sum of the curvature squared of the bending and the green graph marks the curvature square graph of the torsional deformation. Let's look at grid and asymptotic networks. These network layouts are completely defined by the base surface. Only the density can be controlled which has no effect on the shape transformation. In our setup, for a double symmetric open surface, the grid is fixed at a single point in the middle and the corners of the grid are displaced horizontally. On the rotational shape, the inner edge circle is fixed by hinges and the diameter of the outer ring is controlled. Both grids can be transformed into a planar position. The curvature square graphs reveal the contrary character of torsion and bending. Possible minimum energy states can be controlled by the stiffness relations of torsion and uniaxial bending. The range of possible minimum states is marked blue. In architecture, these mechanisms allow the erection or even reversible transformation of doubly curved grid structures. Any compliant deformation eliminates the need for hinges or other kinematic devices. Let's see how this approach is applied in practice. The canopy of the Intergroup Hotel in the German city Ingolstadt is erected using this technology. The initially planar steel grid is lifted from a planar assembly state into its final spatial geometry. Through simulations, the flat layout was derived and the process of erection was planned. The video shows how the grid fragment is lifted at two intersecting nodes and the desired shape emerges. Once the edges are fixed, the grid becomes a rigid structure. The inside-out research pavilion at the Technical University of Munich is constructed using a similar method. Fragments of the grid were pushed into shape by hand. This process relates to the open surface mechanisms of asymptotic grid mentioned before. We developed some research designs with high architectural quality. The focus lies at reversible transformations. Mechanisms of geodesic networks on rotational surfaces and of asymptotic networks on open surfaces are performed on a model scale. The transformations have a non-intuitive character.
currently the kinetic umbrella is under construction. The final assembly is shifted to summer 2021. The umbrella has a diameter of 8 meter and can be deployed whenever needed. The grid structure is based on an asymptotic network. It is covered by a system of membrane panels to protect from sun. The curvature square analysis provides the basis for choosing a suitable profile. Exemplarily, for a hollow section of glass fiber reinforced plastic, it results that the structure has to be pulled down to reach the open state and pulled together to reach the closed state. The potential energy is shown in the bottom graph. The energy, due to self-rate, can simply be derived by the beam's positions or heights that are known for any state. The total energy results from the addition of internal and potential energy of the structural mass. Physical models show the quality of the mechanism. The transformation can be activated by the displacement of two nodes or hands only. We chose glass fiber reinforced plastic as this material has significantly beneficial properties compared to conventional building materials. The maximum possible strain before material failure is the decisive material property to allow large deformations. This results from a low elastic modulus together with high strength. It has a low creep and is rather resistant. Once the structure is set up, it will serve as a testing field for actuation systems. We are focusing on actuation systems including tying or pushing using cables or linear actuators respectively. Therefore, connections at the nodes are hold available to be easily changed and investigated. To close the umbrella, a total mass of about 400 kg has to be partly lifted. If we provide a single tying system at the outer diameter exemplarily, a cable force of about 0.5 kN or 50 kg is necessary. One of the biggest constructional challenges are the hinges. We choose a lateral connection system to allow continuous beams and small connection details. Simulations show that a lateral configuration is valid for the rotational grid setup. The connectors are made of extruded aluminium profiles and standard bolts. We choose a single 8x80mm 8 lamella profile to meet the technical requirements. All 32 profiles with 6 meter length fit inside the package in the top picture. Thank you for listening to my talk on semi-compliant grid mechanisms. 